this shit, baby. Let's go. What's up, heavy hitters? We're here today on another how-to. So I've been getting lots of questions on dumbbell press because I just banged out the 250 dumbbells in Texas. Basically the first one ever to achieve that goal. So I want to go over my form, my setup, um, a little bit of mentality and just everything that has to come with dumbbell pressing. Also, Chris is going to give his insight on dumbbell presses. He's been doing this for years, so he's going to go over everything too. Yeah, so we'll basically talk about like just what type of uh, dumbbell pressing we're doing. So it'll be basically flat dumbbell press. Um, we usually do a lot of floor presses, taking the range of motion out, but we'll explain why we think it's so beneficial with the, the dumbbells and why the stability and the, how you create power through that hand motion um, translates over to your regular bench press. So we always talk about how the little things that we do translate to us being better lifters on the barbell presses. So then we'll go over that too. Yeah, hell yeah, so let's get to it. Let's talk about the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the first step is obviously getting the dumbbells. For me, I'm gonna start off with something that you may not think is a big deal, but I will say dumbbell placement on your thigh. So when you're doing like a, a floor press or, yeah, I would say a floor press, you, you want the dumbbells closer up to your thigh, like closer to your stomach. But when you're doing flat bench, I like to keep the dumbbells closer to my knee so I can just get, I'm basically using my knee as a lever, I guess you could say, or something to just help me bring the dumbbell back. So I'm not using my whole body to stabilize the dumbbell. So I have them somewhat closer to my knee so I can use my, both legs as like a lever to throw the weight back. Um, so that'll be the first thing that goes into dumbbell pressing. I think if you're just putting the dumbbells anywhere on your, on your thighs and you just try to throw them back, it can, you know, you, you do it too close up to your stomach, I think the dumbbells get too close into your body and you're crushed. And um, if they're too far out, it could um, mess up your whole routine too. So I like to keep them um, right below the knee. I feel like that's about the best position for me. So once I'm down, I'm not gonna just let the dumbbells collapse into my body. I'm gonna basically, where my arms are at right now, I'm gonna try and keep my arms this way too. I think this is a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna lean back, go all the way down, keep my arms a 45 degree angle, and then I'm gonna rotate the dumbbells in position. Um, at that same time, I'm keeping my lats super tight. Um, when the dumbbells get rotated in position, I'm just bringing them even tighter into my body, my lats in, and just flexing them hard, and getting that first initial put all lat, all chest, and then into your tries. So I'll do one clean motion so you can kind of get an example of how I do it. So this is one motion. And while I'm going back, I'm basically doing a, a sit-up or I don't know, reverse sit-up you can say. I'm keeping my core as tight as I can because if I let my core loose at all, I'm gonna collapse. I take it real slow and I control the whole entire movement. Just like when I did the 250s. I'll treat these 50 pounds like the 250s. So here we go. Back, back, here. Twist them in position, lats tight, drive, press up, press up. So as you see, as I press, I'm not bringing the dumbbells all the way out here. I'm keeping them a little tighter. I wanna be in a tighter position where I'm less vulnerable. The, the further I'm out here with the dumbbells, my body's more vulnerable, my shoulders, my pecs, everything is just more, more ways to get hurt. So I bring them in a tiny bit tighter, a tighter grip, and I'm just keeping my lats and everything in tighter so I'm not loose and um, not stabilized. So that's one little tip that I use for dumbbells. Maybe some people do like doing them out here and doing them in different ways, but for me, these are all the main keys to being the perfect dumbbell presser. Um, I'll go over them one more time. 
so you guys can kind of make a little checklist. I position the dumbbells closer to my knees. I bring them both back, both dumbbells back, like I'm doing like a reverse sit up, keeping my core tight, bringing them both back at the same time. Once I'm in position, I never let the dumbbell slam to my chest. I keep my body and lats engaged, twist the dumbbells into this position right here. I don't know what that is, slightly bent. And um, then I go straight into the press, starting with the lats, the chest, and into the tricep. And I don't bring the dumbbells out very wide. So if you guys could just kind of follow all those steps and kind of mimic those, I think you guys could become a good dumbbell presser. And also, it's just gonna take time to build up, like Topo said, the stabilizer muscles, so you're not going front to back, side to side, you know, like a Lolo. So anyways, I hope that helped out and appreciate you guys, man. All right, so we're gonna go over the, the flat bench dumbbell press. Um, ever since I came out, like just started doing fitness stuff, this has been a really big go-to. Um, the one big reason is because of the stability reason. If, if you're not at an activation of like being a mastery of your, your kind of your movement, like the bench press, you have the, the straight bar bench press, if I don't, I'm not a mastery of that movement, I don't activate at a certain rate that I can actually engage the muscle group anyways. So this actually, this movement right here actually activates at a higher rate. So it actually teaches you how to use your body better because of the stabilization that you need to actually perform that weight. Okay, so like, like we always talk about in our bench press videos, the lats are huge when it comes to like the pressing because of the stability reason. If you're not stable, you're not powerful. So in this form, actually, you have to stabilize your lats or else the dumbbell will tip either which way. So it makes it a much more natural movement for you so that you can hold it and actually twist your hands with that movement. So we're not naturally supposed to do this right here. Just like if I were to say like pitching for like baseball to softball, this is not a natural movement for the arm. That's why you see a lot more like torn rotator cuffs. But softball, actually, this is a much more natural movement so that you see a lot less injuries. So we want to go over that's the reason, one of the bigger reasons why, because our body is not supposed to actually move the shoulder in that type of way. So that actually teaches us how to engage our lat better. Um, we have our boy James right here, uh, the Mexican Bruce Lee. So we're going to have him grab a dumbbell. And then I've actually never taught James how to do a dumbbell bench press. So we'll, this will be as, as organic as it can be and as natural teaching wise. So it'd be almost like I'm teaching someone that's on our YouTube channel, right? So go ahead and sit down. So I thought a big point that Big Boy made was the, the how do you set yourself up to catch the weight um, at the beginning when you start doing this the weights will be so light that it doesn't actually matter how you pick it up but once you start getting to the level of my big boy pitbull all those guys 100 120s 150s 250s um, everything matters in that how you set it up um, I've seen a lot of guys tear their, their, their pecs from doing it so they'll pull it up like that and then that weight will actually bring them out and then that torn pec torn bicep stuff like that because that weight is so free by itself like I said, it's not like a barbell when you pick it up and it's so fixed. So what we're gonna do is just look at where James has it on his legs. And so why, when Big Boy said that when he comes back with a rocking chair, I thought that was a really good point. Cause you're actually flexing your hip flexors and your core, you're actually tightening yourself just to get into that position. That's why I like using the, the, the bench press dumbbell so much. In the bench press, you can just lay down and then someone lift the weight and then you have to retighten when they put it down if you don't actually know how to retighten. He has to be tight in order to rock back and then squeeze his core so he's already in a good tight position. Um, when I usually give advice on how to do the dumbbell bench press, I always give the advice that when you come bring it back, to always think about that you had a bar and then you're breaking the bar and then that brings your hands to a 45 degree angle. That naturally sits my shoulder into my lat like we've talked about in our incline, our flat bench press, everything like that. So we want to sit this shoulder joint into the lat so when he comes down, he wants to come back and then almost try to sit back like he's already breaking the bar with the lat. Right, so that he wants to sit almost like trying to reach his chest to his hands. Okay, so like, just like uh, Big Boy said, keep your hip flexors tight, your core tight. Let the weight rock you back into a good like start position. Okay, so go ahead, Jim. Good, so obviously it's a little bit light now, so it makes it a little bit awkward to see. Um, we'll go ahead and start up. We're gonna start from the press position, no, like the pressing position. Like. So start up. Straight arms. Okay, so you see how his hands are straight right now. So if he were to actually bend the bar, like come up, pull it apart, you see how like there's so much, there's gonna be so much more chest involved in that. Um, he has his elbows coming in a little bit, but that's all rear delt. Right, so press up again. So I want you to start with your hands slightly apart. Lock your arms out. And I want you to think about breaking it. So at a 45 degree angle. So that when you come down, I want you to think more pulling it down than letting it drop. 
okay? So when you pull down, almost think about trying to swipe your tricep with your lap. So go ahead. Good now, press. So just like we saw, talked about in our incline bench press, come down again. We're, we're trying to achieve a perpendicular form to the floor, okay? So that, that means that we're distributing as much power throughout the muscle groups as possible, press up. And right here, this is where naturally, go again. So that's naturally when he's coming with his elbow, you see how he's brushing that tricep with that lat? His lat is tight right here. That's where the power is at. So that's where that stability is everything for him, okay? So that's where when I'm coming right here, what we talked about in the incline, the initiation of the punch is from the lat. That lat of punches, it stabilizes, so it lets you catch that bar line. So press up again. So that the main point, so I'm saying, so the natural movement behind how you're supposed to press is having the hands at a 45 degree angle, let that movement take you into your lat, let, let yourself load the lat, and then punch with the lat, let the triceps come in and let it lock it out with the chest. So you see that last part? That's where that movement comes from is that when you come in here and you can see your hands pull together like that, that's your chest actually activating and pulling that weight together. So the biggest reason why we do this is because it's much more natural for the shoulder, the elbows, the, the wrist, everything, so that you can actually press at a high rate without actually causing a lot of injury. So the last thing I'll go over is how to dismount. So when I see a lot of people just throw the fucking weight, and we've, we're guilty of that shit too, but what, the same way we came back is the same way we want to come in. So I want to just turn my hands to a neutral grip position, try to pull my legs up to my knees as much as possible, and just let the weight take me down with me. Right? So you, hit, you flex your hip flexors, let it take you back into that rocking chair position, and let the weight actually take you forward into the, the dismount position. Okay, heavy hitters. So that completes the tutorial today on dumbbell presses. Um, I hope that helped out. I basically basically gave all the knowledge that I could bring to the table and what I've learned and basically hands-on over years. The one thing that I forgot to ask, actually um, Mr. Bruce Lee over here told me is, you always wanna get a big deep breath, inhale, and that helps to keep your whole body tight, especially on that first initial layback. If you're gonna go with some heavy ass weight, you better have a tight body so that that is gonna be created by a big inhale, a, a big breath in. Um, so yeah, that'd be the only thing that I felt that I left out. But besides that, I feel I gave you all the tools to become the next world's strongest dumbbell presser. You know, <laughs> when they create those one si or 260s, 270s, or who knows, 300s, now you, now you got the opportunity, man. You got the same knowledge that I have. So just go home and practice that. Yeah, so just like him pointing on that tightness thing, uh, a lot of the times that we don't understand that we actually naturally tighten up from our central nervous system, so like the reaction, it takes 0 0.06 seconds, which is like a millisecond, like that's super fast for your body to initiate. So that's why we talked about keeping the hip flexors tight. When you rock back, that naturally gets that tightness there. Um, but like you said, adding that extra breath and that compression in your stomach and your core and your obliques, that, that makes the biggest difference ever. So um, that's the reason why we like the dumbbells so much because it forces you to stay tight. And it forces you to kind of look at those smaller points and really focus on actual really good form because if not, you might tear your bicep, tear your chest, whatever that might be. It's just, it's a lot more dangerous in a sense that it's not as controlled as a barbell bench press. So that attention has to be at the highest level for you to be successful at it. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. And, um, if you guys want to learn more about uh, not only the form and setup of dumbbell pressing, but you guys want to learn how to get stronger and you guys are looking for a program, we do have that at strengthcartel.com. Um, we have the competition program, which is a 12 week program right. peaking you out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have the heavy hitter program that's going to get you stronger and get you more size. And it's not gonna prepare you for a competition, it's just gonna prepare you to get strong as hell. Mm -hmm. um, anything else to add to that? Uh, yeah, so if, and we've sold a lot. I mean, we've had a lot of uh, athletes come to us and, and want those programs. Um, so if you've done them, send us your testimony. You have our emails. Um, we, we are the ones that have the communication with you guys. So send us pictures, send us videos of your lifts. Um, we'll start like kind of put that on blast, like let you guys get a little bit shine from the, the success you guys have with uh, the programs that we wrote. Yeah, we've heard a lot of PRs. I mean, I've just got a lot of text messages, not so much videos, but a lot of DMs and text messaging saying, um, or emails, emails and DMs, I should say, about how the program has really increased all their lifts. I mean, this is the same program that I run for a comp 
Well, this is the same program that I run in the off season, the heavy hitter program. I mean, I'm getting coached right here with, with Topo and like, I, like he always says, I give my input. I give back to what he gives me and if I feel this and that is not right, I let him know and that's how we taper the programs as well. And then for the dead game program, which is a 12 week program, this is the program that literally the whole team runs to me, Pitt, Chris, we all run Topo's program. So this is not just some program that is random and no one even uses it or it's never been tested. This is a program that's been tested and used with all the guys, with all the heavy hitters. Not one of us um, not run this program. We all do. So, uh, so if anyone has a test on it or has something to say, it's like, hey, you know, are you going to believe the next man or are you going to be believe the results that we show day after day? So. Anyways, you guys want to take your game to the next level, go hit up that uh, dead game or heavy hitter program, strengthcartel.com. So appreciate all love and support, heavy hitters. Keep banging.